When this liner is running at full capacity, it will have 4,000 passengers on board, plus 1,000 staff. With all the bars, restaurants and activities, this has all the facilities of a small town and more. There are a whopping 1,800 cabins on board this liner, and this is the standard class, and it really is pretty good. Of course, if you can afford to upgrade to the Royal Suite, you get all of this. A private bar, your own living room, and let's not forget the baby grand piano with its very own electronic pianist. Photographers say that sexy commercials from the likes of Victoria's Secret and others, as well as loosened attitudes about sexuality, are making boudoir photography more acceptable. Smoke. In a real accident, the smoke would likely be darker and potentially deadly, and miners say perhaps dense enough that they couldn't see their hands in front of their faces. Porter Gosson's departure from the CIA was so abrupt as to be impolite. We don't even know who his successor's going to be. But he's just the latest tenant to be evicted from this administration as President Bush cleans house looking for new faces to spice up his second term. The question in this town right now is who's next? Adam Brooks, BBC News, Washington. After establishing itself as the most powerful changing force in the Arab media, Al Jazeera is pushing forward the horizon still further. Al Jazeera International will soon be broadcasting in English. People ask some with real concerns if the difference between the two channels will just be a linguistic one. Fawzi Bushra, Al Jazeera, Al Doha. But there's no volume of trade. Legal wigs last a lifetime, sometimes more than one lifetime, handed down from father to son. They're never cleaned. That's disgusting. But there's no denying tension between African Americans and Latinos, and much of it starts here in urban areas like Los Angeles, where many blacks feel they're being pushed out of their neighborhoods by a growing Latino population. Every single property on the Monopoly board corresponds to an actual Atlantic City location. I'm on the boardwalk at the intersection of Park Place. Tony Blair was forced to shuffle his cabinet after his party suffered huge losses in municipal elections across Britain this past week. But the crisis in his leadership was deepened by a problem very similar to the one being faced now in the U.S. The huge numbers of undocumented foreigners now living in the country. CBS News has obtained an exclusive copy of the entire identification report. In it, the accuser identifies one of her alleged attackers, the one that's expected to be indicted tomorrow, saying that he has a mustache. Now, defense sources have told me that they have pictures of him from the night before and the night after with no mustache. So this may be something that they point to in terms of determining her credibility. Trish Regan, CBS News, Durham, North Carolina. There have been so many attacks on the beleaguered Iraqi police that law and order has broken down, allowing militias and death squads to flourish. And like the bombing campaigns, they target civilians in what amounts to ethnic cleansing of neighborhoods. The report says the state employs just seven full-time inspectors and says the state should spend $10 million to make the dams safe. Over the years, they've dealt with more than 10 million requests from families concerning individual Holocaust victims. There's a file here on each one of those requests, rooms full of them. What's changing now is that not just individual families, but scholars, historians, whoever, will be able to mine this mother load of original Holocaust material. At a time of growing skepticism and denial about the Holocaust, that's no small thing. Treasure hunters still come here, some armed with metal detectors, some with complicated geometric calculations they are convinced will pinpoint gold. Rock faces have been dynamited, flower beds dug up, a kind of extreme tourism for the true believer. 
زيارة شافيز التي تهدف أيضا إلى إبراز دور أمريكا اللاتينية كمحور مؤثر في السياسة الدولية تزامنت مع زيارة رئيس الوزراء الباكستاني Natural gas has also made a big difference to Egypt's manufacturing industries. Here in the industrial town of Fayoum, 50 kilometers southwest of Cairo, 15 factories have been converted to natural gas over the past year. It brings down fuel costs and it also brings down emissions. Common man's appeal comes largely from places like this, Venezuela's ramshackle barrios, where the poor and desperate live. About 80% of the population here is poor and makes up most of Chavez's political support. This is part of an African Union police station abandoned two nights ago after it was burned down by an angry mob. And it wasn't done by the Janjaweed, not by any armed militia. This was done by frustrated refugees. Worst day of evasion is better than your best day of captivity. One way to evade the enemy, hide out during the day travel at night. This is nicknamed Saudi Arabia's Rodeo Drive. Like the Beverly Hills original, it has all the most expensive stores, and many of the people who are shopping more here today are civil servants whose salaries have gone up 15 percent in the last year, a direct result of the government's increased oil revenues. Cheap gasoline helps make big SUVs, especially American-made ones, popular. Part of the reason is that at today's prices, a full tank of gas costs less than 25 U.S. dollars. It isn't easy. Four out of five horses who start the training wash out, which makes Apple and Roy among the most elite members of the NYPD. Good for crime control, good for community relations, and good for their own kind. One advantage of these oil fields is that the oil deposits are very shallow, just 60 feet below where I'm standing. Oil is literally coming right up out of the ground. Venezuela's oil wealth has missed the vast majority of its population. Here in Caracas, three million of the city's five million residents live in deep poverty in slums like this. This is Norway's most productive offshore oil rig. It was designed and built to break even with oil at a price of $14 a barrel. At current prices, this single platform is making nearly half a billion dollars a month in pure profit. A trip to a gas station in Norway is, by American standards, outrageously expensive. Filling up a family car like this one costs more than 130 U.S. dollars. Well, we just had a tense situation diffused by Australian troops here right in the centre of Dili. This group of young men out there came in armed with machetes and knives. They've now been made to sit down, but these groups are springing up all over town, and the Australian troops have their work cut out just trying to keep them under control. John Paul II inevitably casts a benign but towering shadow over this papal visit. And tomorrow, when Benedict XVI, a German pope, visits the Nazi death camp at Auschwitz to hold prayers for the victims of the Holocaust. His predecessor's lifelong message of reconciliation between peoples and faiths will be poignantly affirmed. Clive Myrie, BBC News, Krakow. The war that is tearing Colombia apart has already lasted for more than four decades. It is increasingly about the production of cocaine and who controls it. And this river is a case in point. We're heading to the town of San Jose, which is a small enclave in government hands. But the territory downriver is controlled entirely by the FARC guerrillas. So the coca leaf produces the cocaine. The cocaine has fueled the internal fighting, and the fighting has displaced the people. There are two million Colombians living like refugees in their own country, and the vast majority of them have washed up right here in the capital Bogota, in the vast and teeming slums that grow day by day. It is here, and not in England, not in Europe, that the most severe social consequences of the world's cocaine habit can be felt. In fact, every hospital here has now run out of space. There are hundreds of people being treated right out in the open, on sidewalks, in parking lots, wherever there's enough space to lay down a mattress and put up an IV. 
Advances in forensic technology like DNA analysis mean there'll probably never be another unknown soldier, a single anonymous warrior to represent all those who've fallen in battle. When you see this kind of damage to buildings in the center of a major city like Jogjakarta, you get a real sense of the destructive power of the earthquake. But at least this wasn't anybody's house. It was a university college. It's in the rural areas where people have lost their homes, lost everything. That's where help is most desperately needed. Israel's withdrawal from these lands last September was meant to separate Israelis and Palestinians. Israel would be on that side of the border just a few miles away and Palestinians would be here in Gaza and there'd be little contact or friction between the two sides. But what's happened here overnight in these fields shows that separation has not ended conflict. James Reynolds, BBC News, Northern Gaza. Well, once again, we've seen Australian armoured vehicles dashing down here to try to calm down a very volatile situation. But they can only stay for a short time, maybe a couple of hours. And once they've gone, the emotions of people who've seen their houses burnt could easily get out of control. The new Prime Minister says he has a plan for dealing with the violence and instability in Basra. He says he has a plan for dealing with the security situation here in the capital. But the real test of the new government will not be the plans it draws up, but the changes on the ground. Ian Panel, BBC News, Baghdad. These people have salvaged what they can from the rubble of their homes. They're beginning the process now of trying to piece together their shattered lives. When the earthquake struck, they ran to the hills over there looking for higher ground because they were fearful a tsunami would follow. They stayed there for three days, too scared to come down. So another day with these sporadic outbursts of violence. The mood here is really quite ugly with the young demonstrators throwing bricks and stones from time to time and the armed police force around me sending back tear gas and rubber bullets. The question is whether the anger of these groups of young people can be converted by the political parties into something longer lasting and more meaningful. The slogan of this growing campaign is today we act, tomorrow we vote, and the politicians know it. This issue has given Hispanics a unified voice, and right now they're using it loud and clear. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News, in Los Angeles. On the field, many athletes learn determination, sportsmanship, and discipline, but without proper supervision, others are learning some ugly lessons. Jake Tapper, ABC News, Washington. There are several dozen U.S. citizens who are detained or imprisoned here in China for economic crimes, and most of them are ethnic Chinese who may have felt they had a certain advantage over others, understanding the Chinese culture with the added protection of an American passport. One of the challenges for ethanol comes from the fact that it is made out here on the prairie. It's too corrosive to put in a pipeline, and so 100% of it has to be put on a train or a truck or even a barge to get it to market. The collaboration is paying off big for both people and pets. Dr. Wilkins has been able to raise the survival rate of his human patients from 70 to 92 percent. And Dr. Withrow says his canine patients are living four times longer. In times of crisis, like 9-11 and the big blackout of 03, New Yorkers tend to band together. But it usually does not take long before the tough exterior reasserts itself as evidenced by this interview with the tram operator. Together, GM and Ford plan to make nearly 700,000 flex fuel vehicles this year. Add that to at least 5 million already on the road. The problem isn't production. It's where do you fill them up? While the FBI says it's not interested in reading Anderson's notes or uncovering his sources, it is still pushing for access to the documents. The CBS News has learned even some justice officials privately say the effort is too heavy-handed. Bob Orr, CBS News, at the FBI. And in the next several months, using this brand new equipment, Duke researchers will be experimenting with heat on entire bodies.
for people whose cancer has spread. The products the Bongiorni's became so dependent on came from factories just like this one here in China. And because of these factories, Americans get a bargain every time they go shopping, and these people get a chance at a better life. In addition to the more modern driver distractions, researchers also looked at that age-old threat, drowsy driving. It's all part of a new Get Tough policy aimed at the 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. But it's a crackdown with consequences. Detention centers nationwide are already at, near, and in some cases, over capacity. It takes a lot for these recruits just to show up for this selection course because they know the Iraqi special forces are a prime target for the insurgents and some militia groups. Even those recruits who don't make it through the course are putting their lives at risk because they have to return to their communities where any association with the Iraqi special operations forces is enough to get them and their families killed. Here's how it's supposed to work. When someone dials 911 on a cell phone, satellites pick up and relay the data to the nearest 911 call center, where computers display the caller's location within about a city block's margin of error. But if that call came on an old cell phone, or if the 911 center doesn't have the technology upgrade, all bets are off. So what's ahead for gas prices? Well, analysts say that prices tend to increase in the spring in anticipation of the summer driving season, and then they even out a bit. Consumers can only hope so. If there is a price of gasoline that's an emotional barrier to driving, Californians haven't hit it yet. Many of the city's African-American voters, usually an incredibly large voting bloc, lived here in New Orleans East. Today, most of them are still spread across the country and can only vote by absentee ballot. By two years of age, children have already formed many food preferences. In fact, researchers say the more different fruits and vegetables a child is eating at two, the more broccoli and tomatoes and avocados, the more likely they'll be eating them at eight or nine. Walkabouts like this one have become a signature of the Queen's reign. Formal and official, but a regular chance to connect with the British public, face to face, and as one of their own. Last year, a pound of copper was worth $1.50. This week, it hit $3 a pound and still climbing. Why so high? It's supply and demand. 29 Palms is the largest marine base in the world in terms of territory, two-thirds the size of Rhode Island. 50,000 Marines and reservists pass through her each year. If you're going to Iraq, you pass through 29 Palms first. If you were to gather every kid she ever taught, you could just about fill Lakeland Stadium to capacity. Twice. She figures she's had about 13,000 students. I had missed. Well, this is what used to be a kitchen of a suite. For years, six thieves-in-law ran this colony from this five-bedroom apartment. And as you can see, it's completely empty now. But prison officials told us that when they came in to move the thieves-in-law, this place had everything from cable TV to air conditioning. This is the very latest version of the Super Note. It says it was printed in 2003 and it was sold for 70% of its face value. To the untrained eye, it's completely indistinguishable from the real thing. The satellite controlled from this room here rotates the Earth every 98 minutes and that's when staff can tell it what to do and what images to take. The key thing that's changed just in the past five or six years is that this commercial industry has expanded so much that it's now selling its images to Western intelligence agencies. Now this device is called a Redius. It's a prototype developed here in Holland by Philips. And the unique thing about it is this, the thin electronic screen, which you can roll in and out at will. And this new kind of electronic paper 
is going to revolutionise reading, according to the people who make it. Bulgaria's rich cultural heritage is under threat from criminal gangs and looters. They're stealing valuable artefacts and selling them to the highest bidder. Oil experts and political analysts agree there is very little the government can do short term to force gas prices down. And the worst is yet to come. Gas prices and the anger they engender figure to be even higher when the summer driving season begins on Memorial Day. Thalia? Tony Guy. This is the international bridge that's supposed to unite these two countries, normally bustling with tourists and heavy cargo. At the moment, it's proving to be an obstacle, with relations between Argentina and Uruguay at their worst for many years. And the problem? The river that runs beneath me and its future well-being. Ten feet below the surface. That is pretty shallow, but few big ships use this part of the East River, and as for recreational users, well, not many people go swimming around here. Anyone can understand the pain and agony of trying to find a missing loved one who has likely died. But there's another aspect to this process. The people who literally sift through bones and personal artifacts, gathering the information that goes into the computer database. For 20 years now, this has all been left out here in the open with no real attempt made to dispose of it. You can see how anything that is worth anything has been looted from them despite the radioactivity. And it is still, of course, very radioactive. We're carrying meters to warn us if we're being exposed to too much. Uh, at the moment, the level's safe, but you wouldn't want to stay here too long. Energy economists have long pondered what the average price of gas would have to be in order to provoke a lasting and significant shift toward mass transit. Current estimates range anywhere from $3.50 a gallon to $5. The Iranian people know that the UN Security Council is meeting this Friday and it could decide to impose economic sanctions on them. But the message from their president today was, crisis? What crisis? There are clear physical benefits to this kind of activity. It relaxes the body, stretches the muscles. But yoga purists say that yoga without Hinduism isn't yoga at all. The first bomb went off here, right behind me. Then two more explosions in rapid succession, one at the other end of this bridge, the next just up the boardwalk, blowing shops and restaurants to pieces. In fact, it's difficult to find Iranians who don't support their government on this issue. Most people think that Iran should be free to go ahead and develop the full range of peaceful nuclear technology. Today, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists said it's giving some 49,000 doctors copies of this poster. They're asking them to hang it in their waiting rooms. It reads, accidents happen. Amid the 12-foot-high rows of cane, the production advantages are obvious. First of all, the energy source is above, not below the ground, and can be produced for $30 a barrel. And that number is about to explode. In just 25 years, there will be 60 million Americans between the ages of 66 and 84, many of them needing full or part-time care. The hottest areas for speculation here is hotels and tourism. In a place like this, that must surely fall into the futures category. Long futures. And don't even ask about the risk factor. This is a court case on which millions were riding on the image of a fruit. The humble apple, irresistible to Adam and Eve, and it seems still irresistible now. Everybody seems to want a bite out of it. لكن الذهب الأزرق لا يزال مورد نادرا في تشاد بسبب الجغرافيا والطبيعة مما يجعل هذا النهر نهر شاري بالنسبة للتشاديين مثل ما هو نهر النيل بالنسبة للسودانيين والمصريين نوردين بوزيان الجزيرة من نهر شاري جمنا تشاد full quarter of a century after the first AIDS cases were discovered, meetings about AIDS still ignite protest and controversy. Few diseases, if any, remain as politically and emotionally charged. 
Opus Dei now has 87,000 members across the world, 3,000 in this country. The vast majority are married and live in their own homes. A small percentage, however, take a vow of celibacy and live in Opus Dei centers such as this one in New York City. It was just after 3.20 in the morning when an RPG hit this building. The machine gunners opened up. That's the M240 machine gunners who are watching. They've seen at least two guys. There are also snipers on the roof who are returning fire. Yet despite those very clear instructions, Jean-Charles was allowed to walk around the corner to this bus stop and even wait for the number two bus without being challenged. I've just done that walk and it's taken me five minutes and 20 seconds. So why was Jean-Charles allowed to walk for such a long time without being intercepted? 